You guys can fire away whenever you're ready. Okay. Anybody's got any questions, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Don't everybody at once. It might be uh, news of some of your guys deciding to skip the bowl game or, or head to the NFL, play but head to the NFL. How does, how does that affect these next couple of weeks for you? Well, anytime you lose uh, good players, it's, it's going to affect your, your team somewhat. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's become very popular now. Um, I, I hate to see that happen, but, um, you know, as I've said before, we live in a society today where things are considerably different than they ever have been before, and um, young people uh, feel that there's a better opportunity for them somewhere else, then um, they're going to make that decision to move on, and so uh, we do the same. The, the one thing that I am concerned about is the, is the longevity of the bowls and the fact that um, uh, I, I would hate for it to become so popular that bowls um, aren't important anymore because um, I think that's a great reward for a team. Uh, I, I couldn't predict the direction, but I would hate for it to get in that area. That to, that to me would not, be, uh, would not be a good thing for college football. Do you see it going in a, even further to, to guys maybe – Say when the championship is maybe off the table, saying, well, I'm just I'm going to skip these last two regular season games. Oh, you know, it's hard for me to predict the future. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I think that you're going to see in the future you could have a team that's in a championship and a guy not play if somebody told him that you are you could be worth this amount of money. And um, I'm guessing that players do it uh, if they're concerned about their durability uh, to stay healthy for, uh, for the spring, for the draft. Well, you know, like with Justice, you know, we protected him as much as we could early in the season, and he got hurt in the latter part of the season, and I would guess that uh, he wants to make sure that he stays healthy so he can um, test and run and do all the different things for the draft. As a coach, what kind of value do you place on a bowl game like this? Well, every game's important for us. Right. Um, and... Uh, it doesn't make a difference uh, what game you're in or where you're playing it, what your record is. Um, people would say, well, there's no way that could be true. That's true to me. You asked me that question. And to me, every game's important. There was one time in my life that I couldn't play in a game. That was my senior year. Um, we were playing Kansas State out here, and I'd torn my knee up the week before against Oklahoma, and I couldn't play. And um, it was the most lonely feeling that I'd had in my entire athletic life because I couldn't play. Well, that's, that's how I feel about games. And I think at that time, I don't know, what were we, five and five or something? It didn't matter to me. What doesn't matter to me is a coach. So um, we've had t two great practices in the fact that our kids have had, uh, they've been very enthusiastic and their efforts have been great. And so that's encouraging and that's exciting for me because that's the way it should be. Coach, what has justice meant to this program and, and how much will he be missed? Well, you miss him a lot. I mean, you take a, a guy that's a um, really, really good player and he's not on your team, it changes uh, some things for us. One, it, it, uh, uh, you don't have as much depth, but um, he's a very uh, exciting player and you know can change a game at any time. Uh, so, you know, it, it uh, it's, we're not as good a team without him as we would be with him, put it that way. How, how, how did those conversations with Justice and Larry unfold? How, how did they kind of inform you that they weren't going to? Well, they just come tell you that they're going to go prepare for the NFL. I don't, I don't ask them why, and I don't have discussions with them, and I don't try to um, t talk them into coming back. I feel like if a young man is going to move on with his career, um, if, if I have to try to convince him to be here, then in most cases it's not going to be good for either side. So any time that we've had a player that has done that, I've just said, hey, you know, I'm disappointed and hate to see that happen because I don't, I don't believe in that. But I respect their opinion. They can, and it's their career and their future. And so to, sorry, it's a very uh, short conversation from a, a standpoint of what's going to happen from that point moving forward. The first time, whoever it was, and you know whether it was Fournette or McCaffrey or whomever. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first time you heard about you know a guy skipping a ball game, you're ready for the draft. Did you think at that point, oh crap, here's, 
it's going to open floodgates? Or did you think that was just isolated at the time? No, I, 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 when, as soon as it happened, I knew it was going to be a, an issue from here on out, and it's only going to get worse. What's your thoughts on this upcoming bowl game as far as being able to rekindle what was once a Big 12 robbery? I think it's a cool game. Uh, this, this team is as good as any team that we've played. This team's really good. Um, you know, they lost to Alabama, lost to Georgia, lost by two points to Kentucky, lost by two points to South Carolina early in the year. Um, offense is very explosive. Defense is good. Special teams are good. It's a really good football team. This will be a great challenge for us. But I'm excited about playing it because I'm an old Big 8 guy. You know, back in the day we played them, and, and uh, I still think one of the tragedies that we've ever had around here is we lost the old Big 12 when we had 12 teams. It was pretty cool. We had a north and south, so we get to play them. And they're a really good team. So it'll, it'll be a good game for us, uh, and we'll have to play the very best we can in order to, to have a chance to win. You talked about having two really good practices, and you mentioned you were going to you know, allow these early practices to be good for the, the younger guys, get them more action. What have you thought of the younger guys you've seen out there? Well, they're doing good. You know, we got them a lot of reps today. Um, they're, they're, we're going to play base on base and let them, let them go and play and bang around a little bit and um, watch guys compete. You know, they, they get somewhat lost during the season because of two days for preparation. Um, but now we can get them some really quality work. And, you know, you take a little bit of a risk of a guy getting hurt. But um, I think it's more important. We believe it's more important to let them go play and let them have some fun and, and let them enjoy the bowl experience. The first really big win you had here, uh, I mean, when you went up there in 08, Mike had beat Missouri mm -hmm. and they were ranked third. Do you still consider that to be one of the big building blocks? I think that was the biggest win um, in, in, in my career based on that kind of turned the table for us. We've been really close, but, uh, you know, at some point, unfortunately, <clears throat> you have to do something that makes your team, the people that follow your team, think, hey, this is going to be something different. And they were really good then. Uh, I think we played them. They had never had a three and out, right? The whole year, right. That's and, and and isn't that the one where Fodge tried to uh, fake the punt on on fourth and twenty one? Oh yeah. Um, so that was a big win for us. We had a great defensive scheme, and we put the backer out there as a rush end. Uh, we were that was one of the first times that you saw colleges put a linebacker out there and play him as a defensive end to try to rush. Is his name Chase? Chase Daniels. Yeah. Uh, so that was a big win for us. Was the linebacker Robert? Who did who, who did they line up? I mean, I, uh, it'll come to me eventually, probably when I'm showering. But I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, remember Kendall had that big run late. Well, but Double D had two great catches. He did. Double D did. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. Double D he had two unbelievable catches yeah. in that game. Um, I'll think of the, the young man's name here in a second. That that we put it rush in. He had like three sacks, right? But I mean, to take your program, not just that. Outcome, but but that was a big outcome in, in taking you from here to here. I mean, you were seventh in the country about a month after that. Didn't you? Yeah, see, see, I think they were second or third, right? They were third. And so that was just a huge win for us, especially on the road, because at that time um, we hadn't won a lot of games on the road. N not just me, but anybody that coached at Oklahoma State in league play. We weren't very successful on the road until you go all the way back to when we had Barry here and those guys. I know you can't talk about names, but you got a huge visit weekend this weekend. Are you excited to, mm -hmm. to get into gear for that? Yeah, a lot of work's going into it. Um, hoping we'll get a little help from the Mother Nature on the weather. Uh, but we've got a bunch of guys coming in, and uh, so looking forward to kind of going through that. This, these, these 10 days, starting um, um, last Sunday all the way through about next uh, Tuesday, are the busiest time of the year for us, for all of us, with recruiting and, and bowl games and practice and getting the players ready academically for finals and so on and so forth. I know Robert asked about the young players sort of in general. How important are these practices for, for the quarterback position and getting a look at Duran Spencer? You know, as I said, um, I don't remember if I said it after the TCU game or not, but um, for us to be able to get bowl eligible means a lot because of the guys that deserve to, to be at a bowl and, and to get everything that goes along with the bowl, not necessarily the guys in the two deep, the other guys. And then secondly, we need practice. We need these uh, 16 practices. See, we got, a, we got a heck of a break because we play really late. So 
we'll have, unless there's something that happens weather-wise that's out of the ordinary, we'll get 16 real practices. In spring ball, we only get 10. You know, you get 15, but three of them were non-pads, so that doesn't even count. And one of them is some kind of a spring game, which is like a, an NFL Pro Bowl, so that doesn't count. So you only get 10 practices in spring. Well, we're going to get, like, I say 16, probably 14 legitimate practices in this bowl game. That's a big deal for our, our team. You started the year four deep at running back, now you're just down to two. Do you yeah. see a third back emerging by the bowl game? Jeter. Jeter's out there getting a little work. Uh, he went the wrong way most of the time today. But he's out there, and we put him in there with the threes and uh, let him run in there, and they tackled him a bunch. And uh, he realized that he wasn't playing, uh, he wasn't redshirting anymore. Uh, and so he's in there working, getting some quality work. So he went the wrong way. But Most he's of the time today though, right? he did. Huh? <laughs> he's fast about it, though, right? Yeah, he looks good doing it, but uh, he, he, uh, he went the wrong way a few times. So hopefully we can get him fixed in a couple weeks. Did works real good if you put R on the right hand and L on the <laughs> left hand. So, did you have any idea, Justice and Larry, that they wouldn't play, or when they told you, were you surprised? Yeah, I, I said that preseason. Oh, you're talking about in the bowl? In the bowl no, I didn't yeah. have I didn't have any idea on that. Uh, I didn't feel like that uh, that Justice would would be back next year. He's pretty far along academically. I thought he was graduating, but he's not. He's pretty close. Um, so I thought that um, he would be. I'm guessing that he was concerned about durability. That's why most guys do it. I mean, I could be wrong. You have to ask him. Um, and then uh, uh, with Larry, no, I mean, no, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, hadn't thought about any of that. No. And I know you've talked a lot the last couple of months about Darion's leadership and, and bringing him to road games. His decision to pursue a transfer after graduation, how, how does that affect? This team well, I mean, we lost a defensive lineman, a 325 pounder. It's hard for us to, to, to find those guys. They don't grow that many of them around here. Um, so uh, I hated to see that. I mean, you know, he came in and said that he wanted to play his last year with his brother. And uh, um, it's short conversation. And, and uh, he had said that, it, you know, originally he was wanting to be here, but it, he had a conversation with his parents. You could probably get in touch with him for clarification. And, he felt like that they wanted to be in location with him and his brother and on Saturdays, and that was one way to do it. And of course, I was disappointed, but um, you know, I, under, I mean, I understand. I mean, that's again, that's the world we live in today, and so it is what it is. We got to go get another one. So I know I had been told that he'd been looking at several different graduate programs. So it is confirmed that Nebraska is where he's going. I, I don't have. I just know what he what what they tell me, uh, which is there's a possibility. I mean, I hate to tell you he's going to Nebraska, and, and, and then he and then he ends up at uh, wherever the Steelers or something. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, I, you would have to ask him. But but he, these are short conversations, and uh, so he comes in and says that he's going uh, to um, go to Nebraska. And I said, you know, hate you're doing that. I'd like to have you here. Appreciate what you've done. And can you tell me why? And that's what he told me. And so I'm guessing that's where he's going. When did that conversation happen? Uh, well, yesterday. I mean, I, I talked to him briefly, and then today, just to kind of say, hey, you know, I love you, you love me, and good luck to you. Do you ever feel like, in the past years, you all have kind of benefited from transfers coming into this program? With several people leaving after this season, do you ever feel like it's kind of the pendulum swinging the other way? How do you deal with that? Oh, I don't know. I, I just think it's the future. I, I think that, uh, I think that um, it's just the way it is. Now, uh, there's some... Uh, legislative uh, things out there right now that uh, could could um, even make it more um, feasible to, to, to roll out of here. There's talk about not having a uh, players not having to sit here, and then they could just go from team to team. If that happens, it'll even be more difficult. So uh, I don't I don't see it changing. I just think it's the way it is. Is there anything like you or, the, or even your profession can do to counter that if that's the, the war? I mean, what's realistic on your end to We live in adjust? a very, very, very liberal society where things like that um, are not going to be debated uh, or um, confronted based on the number of lawsuits that have been filed already out there in uh, San Francisco. And the NCAA's got so many lawsuits right now, they can't even cover them all. So a um, young man comes in and said he wants to leave and you tell him no, and he goes over here and files a suit against whoever, then they don't want that battle, so that's why it's the way it is right now.
and, and it's not going to change. They're, they're, they don't want to mess with it. So um, I would not be shocked if at some point they take the one, one year sit and transfer out and players can just go from team to team, just like in, in that, that way in basketball. No, no, no. You but every other sport. Every other sport, yeah. maybe. So I, I would say that um, I, I'm just going off to what I see, and I would say it's probably not far away. You, you talked about the, the difficulty of replacing the numbers when a guy leaves. Mm -hmm. I mean, where are you guys going to stand on signing day when you go into the end point? Um, well, hopefully that's something that we can get changed. Um, I've tried to get the ball rolling on that. Um, you know, the, in, in order to try to, to gain ground on something like that, um, it's not easy, but the the air, the difficult part of it is is that well, like let, let's just say that I've already gone over this, but say you have 23 seniors, you get 25 initials, and you have seven kids that have eligibility left, and they're academically sound, and they leave and go on the portal. If you add that up, that, that you get to 30, and I can only sign 25 kids. I can't replace those other five, so you would start the year at 80. I mean. Specifically, looking at your team right now, with, with where you stand, are you even going to be able to get up to 85 at this point? Probably, probably the closest we can get to 82. Yeah, we got a bunch of players that have been